Hello everyone, welcome back to Chemical Engineering Investment Channel. In our today's video, we will again focus on the topic or the subject of chemical reaction engineering and we are bringing the lecture number 50 for you and in today's lecture, we will solve an example and we will see how we can calculate the volume of non-isothermal plug flow reactor. In lecture number 49, we had done the same activity but for the non-isothermal CSTR and now in today's activity, we will be solving for the non-isothermal PFR. So what is the problem statement? Let's just go through it. That normal butane C4H10 is to be isomerized to isobutane in a plug flow reactor. This elementary reversible reaction is to be carried out adiabatically in the liquid phase under high pressure using essentially trace amounts of a liquid catalyst that gives a specific reaction rate of 31.1 per hour at 360 Kelvin. So there is an isomerization reaction where normal butane will be converted to isobutane in a plug flow reactor. This is an elementary reaction system and reversible. Once it's reversible, it means we have to count the product side as well. And elementary means that the stoichiometric coefficient and the exponent in the rate equation will remain the same. It is an adiabatic system, but it is not an isothermal system. So it will be a non-isothermal plug flow reactor and the phase of the system is liquid phase. This information is very important because if it's a gas phase system, the scenario will be changed as you see that V is equal to V naught for the liquid phase system for flow reactors, while V is equal to V naught 1 plus epsilon X P naught over PT over T naught is for gas phase system. And we have been given the specific reaction rate at 360 Kelvin while the feed enters at 330 Kelvin. So first thing is to calculate the PFR volume, which is necessary to process 163 K mole per hour or 1 lakh gallons per day at 70% conversion of a mixture of 90 mole percent N-butane and 10 mole percent isobutane. So there are two components in the feed. Number one is N-butane, which is obviously converting to isobutane and then there is isopentane, which will not react in the system. So this 10 mole percent is considered as inert in the system. The second thing is that to plot and analyze X, which is the conversion X of E, which is equilibrium conversion, T temperature and minus R, which is the rate of reaction down the length of the reactor. So we have to see what are the changes in these values with the length of the reactor. And accordingly, this is the information that has been given to us that activation energy is 65.7 kilojoule per mole. K of C, which is concentration equilibrium constant, very important factor once we are talking about the reversible system. It is 3.03 .03 at 60 degrees centigrade. Initial concentration of the reactant, which is A, which is N butane, CA naught, is 9.3 mole per cubic decimeter or 9.3 K mole per cubic meter. Heat of reaction for the system is minus 6900 joule per mole of normal butane. And specific heat capacity for butane, obviously for normal and ISO, is 141 joule per mole per Kelvin, while that of isopentane is 161 joule per mole per Kelvin. So first thing is to apply the algorithm. There are five steps once we talk about mole balance, weight loss, stoichiometry, combine and evaluate. But these are valid for isothermal system. Once we talk about the non-isothermal system, we have to add a sixth parameter, which is the energy balance. So we will start with the mole balance and mole balance equation for PFR is F or dx over dv is equal to minus Ra. If we write the rate law, it is an elementary reversible system. So it means we will write rate law as minus R is equal to KCA minus CB over K of C. This term accounts for the reversible pattern. And since the exponents are same as that of the stoichiometric coefficient in the rate equation, so that will remain the same. And K will be calculated as K is equal to K at T1 exponential E over R1 over T1 minus 1 over T, while K of C will be calculated as K of C is equal to K of C at T2 exponential delta H Rx over R. 1 over T2 minus 1 over T. Obviously, this T, T2 and T1, these three are the different values. If you remember our previous case of isothermal reactions, that if K is given at one temperature, which is single temperature, and the temperature is constant or uniform throughout the reactor, we say, or we consider a single value of K. But now it's a non-isothermal reactor, so obviously there will be a change of temperature down the length of the reactor. And accordingly, we just cannot rely on the one single value. and Accordingly, we have to calculate. Then, 
applying the stoichiometry, we are given that it is a liquid phase system. So, V is equal to V naught. Accordingly, C A is equal to C A naught into 1 minus X and C B is equal to C A naught X. Putting the values of C A and C B in the rate equation, accordingly, we get the value as K C A naught 1 minus 1 plus 1 over K of C into X. If you have copy pencil in your hand, you can simply apply the algorithms and the concepts of stoichiometry and combine that how we get this equation. Then we will apply the energy balance and the energy balance equation is T is equal to T naught plus minus heat of reaction into X divided by summation of theta I into CPA. Now how these parameters we can evaluate, we will go to the parametric evaluation and we will calculate the value of T through it. Now we have been given that N butane is 90% of the total feed while the 10% include isopentane which is considered as inert. So if we have to calculate the F naught, it will be 0.9 times of total flow rate. Obviously, it's very simple calculation that the total flow rate is given to us as 163 k mole per hour. So, if we multiply it by 0.9, it will be 146.7 k mole per hour, while the remaining quantity will be of the isopentane. Now, we have to solve this summation theta i CPI, and that is equal to CP of A plus theta i CPI. CP of A means that the limiting reactant will be considered as separate quantity while the other reactants or the other components in the feed stream will be considered as the other quantity. So, it will be Cp of A plus theta i. If you remember our definition of theta, it was the mole fraction of that species divided by the mole fraction of the limiting reactant or the number of moles or the concentration. So, accordingly, Cp of A is given as 141. Theta of I is summation of inert, which is 0.1, divided by 0 0.9. 0 0.1 is for, corresponds to isopentane and 0 0.9 corresponds to normal butane. And accordingly, that Cp is 161 for the inert species. So, accordingly, the sum gives an answer of 159 joule per mole per gallon. So, this parameter is solved. We already know the value of delta H. We already know the value of T naught. So, we can simply say it as T is equal to T naught plus minus into minus 6900 over 159 into X and we get T is equal to 330 plus 43.4 into X. So, this is the expression, simplified expression which we have derived after going through initial calculations. Now, if we go again to the parametric evaluation for K and K of C, now that K is equal to 31.1 which is K naught into exponential minus E over RT, normally we say it like that, but here it is E A over R 1 over T 1 minus 1 over T. Now we have been given in the initial statement that we were given the 31.1 at 360 Kelvin. So we have written 360 over here while T will be calculated from the energy balance equation. And the activation energy value is given over here 657 over 8.314 accordingly it transforms to K is equal to 31.1. Exponential 7906 T minus 360 over 360 into T. Same goes for K of C. It is 3.03 .03 and accordingly delta H which is minus 6900 and the temperature T2 is 333. And accordingly we get the value as K of C is equal to 3.03 .03 exponential minus 830.3 T minus 333 divided by 333 into T. Now we need to find the equilibrium conversion expression, once we say that the system is at equilibrium, it means that there is no rate of reaction, so minus Ra approximately becomes 0. When it becomes 0, is equal to Kc naught 1 minus 1 plus 1 over Kc and that x converts into x of E because now we are talking about the equilibrium system. And once we rearrange this equation, it becomes x of E is equal to K of C over 1 plus K of C. So now we have to solve this equation by putting the value of k of c and how we can do it let's go to the next part which is a preliminary calculations and how we can do it for example we say that x is equal to 0.2 because if you remember we have to plot as well and we have to find the value at 0.7 as well so the first part is to plotting so let's say that x is equal to 0.2 so once we put the value of x is equal to 0.2 we get the answer as 338.6 kelvin now the temperature is known, we put the value in K and K of C expressions to get the answer as 7.8 per hour for K and for K of C is 2.91. Now 
Now we know the value of k of c, so we can get the value of x of e, which is equal to k of c over 1 plus k of c, and according to the equilibrium conversion is 74% or 0.74. Minus RA, we can determine it, it is equal to k into c a naught, 1 minus 1 plus k of c into x. Now that x is 0.2, k of c is 2.91, c a naught is 9.3, it was given in the statement 7.8, you have calculated here. And accordingly, minus R is equal to 53.07 k mole per cubic meter per hour. And if we want to calculate F A naught over minus R A, now that F A naught is 146.7, minus R A is 53.07, and that comes out to be 2.76 cubic meter. Now, this is calculation for one value, which is x is equal to 0.2. Now, if you repeat it for the other values, you can, you can get this table for each value of x for 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.65, and 0 0.7. And you can get at each point the value of temperature k, k of c, x of e minus r a and f a naught over minus r a. And if we want to represent it like that, this is the graphical representation which represents the graph between the conversion which is x and f a naught over minus r a. Now you can see that the nature of the graph here till this point is approximately or the slope of the point is very little. But if you look at this region, which is from 60 to 70 percent, you can see the abrupt change. So it means that if you want to calculate the volume of the PFR, you have to divide it into two segments. First segment is from 0 to 0.6 and the second segment will be from 0.6 to 0.7. And this is how it is solved in the next part, which is V is equal to integral 0 to 0.7 FA naught over minus RA into D of X. And it is divided into two parts 0 to 0.6 and then 0.6 to 0.7. And now applying the Simpson rule for 0 to 0.6, obviously you will get the four points 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, and 0 0.6. And for 0.6 to 0.7, you will get the three points 0 0.6, 0 0.65, and 0.7. And accordingly, once you put the values of FA naught over minus RA at each point, you get the volume as 2.61 cubic. So this is how you calculate the volume of a non-isothermal plug flow reactor. As you can see, the basic calculations were almost the same as that of the PFR with an exception that energy balance aspect was involved and due to that energy balance aspect, there were some variations, but overall philosophy is same as that of or somehow matches with the PFR. So I hope you have understood all the aspects of this lecture. If you have any queries, feedback, suggestion, Please provide it in the comment box and I would be happy to answer it. So that's it from today's lecture. Thank you so much. Please do watch, like, share the video and subscribe to the channel. Also click on the bell icon to get all updates related to this channel. Till then, it's goodbye. Stay tuned for more exciting videos on this channel.